Welcome to the Having It All podcast, the show about what it takes to live an abundant, loving life. My name is Matthew Bivens, and each week I'm helping you get out of your head so that you can truly have it all. Let's do it. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to the Having It All podcast. My name is Matthew Bivens, and I am excited that you're joining me today on this Tuesday so that we can continue to talk about what it looks like to have it all. So this is a a different type of episode for a couple of reasons. Uh, First of all, I'm recording at night. I don't normally record at night. Normally, I do my episodes in the middle of the day. I'm like at the peak of my energy. But there's something about this topic that I'm just feeling this late night vibe. And we're going to roll with this tonight. It's going to be great. And the second thing that is different about this episode is I'm going to do more teaching today. A lot of times I'm, I'm sharing uh, stories and, and things from my life, examples, the breakdown, the breakthrough, all of that. Um, and there will be a little bit of that in this. But today I'm, I'm really going to focus on teaching. And what I'll be teaching is principles. So I'm going to share with you the five key principles that I live by. The five principles that I use to govern my life. I'm going to dig into what they are, why these principles are so powerful, and I'm going to really teach you how to live a principally centered life. And you can go and 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 study and you know really absorb the wisdom of pretty much any sort of successful person in life whether that's business success or uh, success in all the other different areas, all the different ways. And they all align in some way. They are aligning to principles. And in the the, the bigger conversation around improving yourself and becoming the greatest version of yourself and all the things that you're seeking to do by listening to this podcast and podcasts like mine, you've probably heard of principles. You've heard people talk about principles. And yet, how well do you really understand principles? How well do you understand what they are, first and foremost? Some concrete examples of principles, like some some actual principles. And how well do you understand how to use them in your life? All of that is my goal today. All of that is what I'm going to teach you today. And this is going to be a, a cool one. So I'm very excited. I get to do something a little bit different. And it's going to be a fantastic episode. You might want to have some notes ready, um, or you might want to just plan on perhaps listening to this episode a couple of times so that you can really get this stuff to to sink in. Okay, let's kick it off by starting off with some magic because, you know, that's what we, we do in this podcast. We share magical moments. The reason being, one of the ways you know you are living an abundant loving life is by having more magical moments. Those moments when you influence yourself, others, and life in an empowering way. And so that's how you know if you're really moving down your path towards having it all is you start to see more magic show up, like more magic starts popping up all over the place. So I'm going to share with you an example of magic uh, from, from my recent life. And then I invite you to pause the episode and reflect on magic for yourself because I always want you to remember how powerful you are. I always want you to remember that you are a creator. And right now, you are creating your life. You are creating your experience. You are creating a lot of the things around you that are happening. So when you can connect with the fact that you are a creator and you have the ability to create whatever it is that you want, you will unlock so many awesome things. So my magic happened this past Saturday. And every Saturday morning, Sarah, Maya, myself, and a community of other people we all gather for what we call the fun run. And this is through the Your Day Balance game. It's the Your Day Balance game fun run. And it's a four-mile run every week. And it is led by my man, Anthony Strayhorn, a.k.a. Stray Fit. Go check him out on Instagram. He is just an incredible guy, coach, vegan athlete, leader, influencer. He does so many different things. And he's the guy that leads this run every Saturday. Well, the magic was that this past weekend he was out of town and he entrusted in me the, uh, the, the, the mantle <laughs> of leader of the fun run, 
which was awesome. That's magic, you know, magic because I got a chance to just corral everybody and and get the energy going and lead us through this run, which is something I love doing. I love leading groups. I love working with people, especially when it comes to movement. That's my jam. Uh, and the second reason why this is magic is because, you know, there's been a lot of trust built up between he and I. And for somebody to to trust you with, you know, something as important as as leading a class or leading their group of people or leading in general, like that's a big thing. And that's indicative of a lot of reps that I've put in with my personal character, being a man of my word, showing up powerfully and showing up consistently. So the fact that Anthony trusted me to lead this run just showed where I was at and showed where where the two of us were at in our relationship. And to me, that's incredibly magical. You know, like I'm playing and I have this right now. So it's it's an amazing example of putting out a vision and creating it. But I was always playing to have a lot of people around me, like a, a, a core of people around me where I could lean on them if I needed them and they could lean on me if they needed me. So this magic is all about that vision coming to life and it happening in this Saturday fun run. So that's me. And now I invite you, hit pause in the episode. Hit pause and reflect on how you have influenced self, others, or life recently. Because you're doing it. You've done it today. I guarantee it. You know, listening to this podcast might be an example of magic for you. Maybe you could have listened to, to something that would have taken your energy in one direction but you said, you know what? I want something a little bit more empowering and encouraging. I'm going to put on having it all. And boom, that right there is magic. So take a moment, pause the episode, reflect on your magic, and then we will dive into some listener love because I have so much love and gratitude and appreciation for you for tuning into this podcast. And when you all take the time to connect with me outside of the podcast, connecting with me on Instagram or on Facebook or my email or however it is it happens, I am in just so appreciative of it. I really do love building and forging these relationships. So today's it, uh, listener love goes out to Matthew on Instagram. And Matthew, first up, man, wonderful name. <laughs> I love the fact that you go by Matthew. I go by my full name as well. So that is awesome. And it's also very awesome that you listen to the show, you listen to the podcast, and that you carved out time from your day to jump on Instagram and shoot me a note. I appreciate that so much, and I love that you gave me some insight into you know, what you had gotten from the podcast. So the fact that you're putting together a vision board is awesome. There is so much power in that tool and helping to, to set the vision for your life, to begin with the end in mind with your life, and I'm excited to hear from you how that process goes of you not only constructing your vision board, but then really using it, you know? And so, Matthew, I appreciate you taking a moment to reach out to me, man. Thank you, thank you so much. If you want to be like Matthew and reach out and connect with me on Instagram, you can do so over there. My handle is Matthew underscore Bivens. You can also hit me up on my email at mattcbivens at gmail.com. And like I said, I would love to connect. I would love to get into some cool conversations with you. It would be so tremendous. So hit me up. All right. I've got some some cool updates to share with you about my website. So I've been working on this thing for a while now. And uh, a couple of, uh, about a month or two ago, I, I unveiled the new look of the website with some new pages. Um, and the updates continue to roll out. So my goal really for my site, MatthewBivens.com, is for that site to be the place where you go to learn how to have it all, to learn how to live and experience an abundant, loving life. I want MatthewBivens.com to be the hub. And so what I've started to do is putting my, I put my podcast up there, but I'm also putting together blog posts and videos that go along with the podcast, that complement the podcasts. So I, I started with a video um, to go along with last week's episode on vision boards. So last week's episode was called My Process for Creating a Vision Board That Isn't Useless. And after I finished recording that show, I went and flipped on my webcam and put together a video called The Secret to Making Visualization and Vision Boards Really Work. 
and the two th- those two pieces of content go together. So if you listen to last week's episode about vision boards and you want to take it a step further, then go to the website, check out the blog section, and you'll see there's a blog post there. And in that, you're going to have the podcast episode and a video. And both of them together are really going to help you take vision boarding and visualization to an entirely new level. So you can go and check that out on the website. You can also just go to YouTube and search my name and you'll see the vision board uh, and visualization video as well as all the future videos and all that great stuff. But I am really trying to put everything under one roof at MatthewBivis.com. That's just going to continue to be built out as my hub. So go check out that video and let me know your thoughts. You know, I want to I want to always be creating things that you all are interested in. So if you like videos and you want more, let me know. If you want more blog posts, let me know. If you want more or different podcasts, let me know. If you're interested in in more courses and workbooks and things that you can really like, sink your hands into, let me know that as well. I thrive off of feedback. So you can send your feedback to my personal Gmail, mattcbivins at gmail.com. Or you can direct message your feedback to me on Instagram at Matthew underscore Bivens. Okay, let's get into principles, everybody. This is some great stuff. This is where I start when I'm kicking off with a new client. We start with principles. And that's because principles are foundational. Foundational, like the world, nature, the universe, all of that works off of principles. And it's really important that we understand how principles work, that we understand what they are. Because when we align with principles and we, we flow with them and we use them in our lives, things work. Like things flow. We can tap into all sorts of amazing stuff when we align to principle. When we misalign with principle, when we go against principle, things don't work. It creates friction and resistance and tension and anxiety and all sorts of different things happen when we go against principle. And now the thing is that a lot of people are unclear as to what principles actually are. And if you are unclear as to what principles are, then it's going to be challenging to align with them. If you don't know what they are, how are you going to align with them? And when that's the case, it becomes real easy to go against them and then to be frustrated at your life and frustrated about, you know, the life that you're creating. And if you are to, you know, look up uh, quotes on principles and, and, and successful people in different industries and different fields from athletes to business folks to, you know, uh, uh, scientists and all sorts of things, like people talk about principles all over the place. If you go and Google and, and, and search life principles, they're going to have millions of results. And with something that's so important and something that so many people are talking about, I think the question to ask yourself is how much clarity do you really have around what a principle is and some examples of principles in your own life? And so my ultimate goal with not just this episode but with having it all is that We are living principally centered lives, principally centered lives. And for more on what principally centered living is, I totally recommend go and buy the book Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. Because in habit number two, begin with the end of mind, he breaks down so beautifully what principally centered living is. And I've used this, this, uh, this book and that section in a lot of different episodes. I've talked about different centers, you know, what, what happens when you, have, when you are family-centered or spouse-centered or money-centered, all these different things. And so if you want to dive in deeper on that for yourself, definitely go and pick up that book because it'll just expand your mind to a whole new degree and it'll create so much more awareness around this thing called principles. Today, what I'm really going to do is I'm sharing with you my five principles, the five that I use to live, to, 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 to govern my life. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you what the principle is. I'm going to explain a little bit about what the actual principle is so that you can understand it. And then I'm going to give some examples of what it looks like to align and misalign. And that's all we're going to do today. 
you're going to get those five principles, some information on them, and what it looks like to align and misalign. Because this is a perfect place to start. I, re I just want to get you off started uh, uh, on, on this path of understanding principles and really connecting with what it means to be principally centered and living a principally centered life. And then in future episodes, we'll just go deeper, you know, maybe in webinars and things like that too. We'll just go deeper and deeper into principally centered living because it is 1,000% connected to having it all. In order to have it all and to truly live an abundant, loving life, you have to be principally centered. Or, let me rephrase it, it becomes so much more effective, your path to having it all is so much more straight and smooth when you are principally centered. When you are not principally centered, it's challenging. It's challenging, and you'll understand why in a second. So let's start real quick just by a simple definition of what a principle is. A principle is a universal truth. It is something that is true for every person. Every person, every, every animal, every plant. doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are. doesn't matter when you were born, if you were born, you know, 10 years ago, 50 years ago, or 1,000 years ago, a principle is a universal truth. It applies to all of us. It applies to all things. So an example of a principle, and this is one that I'll dig into later, an example is for every choice, there is a consequence. For every choice, there is a consequence. Consequence in this case just means a result. For every choice, there is a result. Now, that is true for all people. It's not like for every choice is a consequence is true for me, but it's not true for you. Or it's not like it's true for me sometimes and other times it's not true. No, it is absolutely true. And so that's what you want. I want you to connect with when it comes to principles. Principles are universal truths, right? And that's one of the reasons why, without going really deep into this right now, that's one of the reasons why principally centered living is, is the direction you want to head. Because you want to have at your core, at your center, you want to have things that are universally true, that are, that are foundational, that are strong, that are grounded. You want to have like that bedrock, you know, it, at your core. You don't want things that you really put at the center of your life that are flimsy or that can that sway with the breeze or move with circumstance or change depending on emotion, or change depending on perspective or mood. You don't want that stuff. You don't want to anchor your life on those things. What you want to do is anchor your life on principles. So hopefully now you can kind of understand a little bit deeper as to what a principle is. And it's different than a belief, because a belief is something that you believe is true. A belief is true for you, right? I might have a certain belief about you know, uh, a, a certain type of eating. Like maybe I believe that eating animals is immoral. That's my belief. That's something that I believe is true or that I might believe is true. But you may not believe it. So that belief right there, eating animals is immoral, that's not a principle. It's not universally true, but it's a belief. The challenge is and the thing that happens is when we confuse principles and beliefs, stuff gets real sticky. A lot of conflict can happen. And so let's go back to just connecting with the idea that a principle is a universal truth. It's true no matter what. It's true for all people, all things, all the time. All right? That's what a principle is. So here are five key principles, the five key principles, because there's more than five, but these are the five key principles that I choose to live my life by, that I choose to allow to govern my life. I'm going to go through them one by one, and or I'm going to go through the whole list, then I'll go back one by one. The first is, for every choice, there is a consequence. Principle number one, for every choice, there is a consequence. Principle number two, everything is energy. Everything is energy. Principle number three, consciousness creates. Principle number four, health supports life. Health supports life. And principle number five, the PPC balance is the precursor to longevity. So let's start back at the top and dig into these a little bit more. 
The first principle I shared is for every choice there is a consequence. And remember, consequence simply means a result. Simply means a result. So for every choice that you make, there is some sort of result. Sometimes the result is seen. Sometimes the result is unseen. But make no mistake, for every choice that you make or I make or any person or thing makes, there is a consequence. There is a result. What's really awesome about this is when you really let that sink in. Wow, for every one of my choices, there is a consequence. Okay. When you really let that sink in, what you're doing when you align with that principle is you are taking responsibility for your choices. You are taking responsibility for your choices, and therefore you're taking responsibility for your life. And if you take that a step further, you're taking responsibility for your ultimate outcome, for your destiny. And that's a powerful thing. That's an amazing thing. For every choice as a consequence is absolutely connected with the idea of having it all. Because people who have it all take responsibility for their lives. They own it. They say, you know what? I made that choice, and this is a potential consequence. I'm okay with that. I will accept responsibility for that. One area that I, I, uh, I see in my sphere sometimes where people sometimes align and sometimes misalign is in sports. I watch a lot of sports, and right now basketball is, is back in season. And I'm sure at some point this year there's going to be somebody who's going to take some sort of substance and get a suspension, right? And so if you look at that in terms of the principle, for every choice is a consequence. If a pro athlete is going to take some sort of substance, like a steroid, that's the choice that they made, and they get suspended, that's the consequence, right? Take the steroid, get suspended. Make the choice, there's a consequence. Now, aligning with that principle, that athlete might say, hey, you know what? I'm going to totally own this. I get it. I made a choice, and this was one of the potential consequences. Another consequence may have been I wouldn't have gotten caught, but I did get caught. So, boom, that's a consequence. I'm going to own it. I see how I created this circumstance, and I'm going to do what I need to do in order to make amends. That's alignment. That's taking responsibility. Misalignment with for every choice is a consequence might sound like, do you know what? It wasn't my fault. Why is this rule in place? This is a terrible rule anyway. Why is this league out to get me? You know what? It was my trainer. My trainer put something in my water. I didn't know what they were giving me, and I'm not responsible. You see the difference? The principle is true no matter what. For every choice is a consequence. You get to choose ultimately if you want to align with it. And when you align with it and you take responsibility for your life, it, like, it actually gives you like power, accepting responsibility. It gives you power. And you can use that and you can flow with that. And you can just ride that downstream. But when you go against it and you buck it and you try to ditch that responsibility, things don't work. Right? Stuff starts to become, there becomes a lot of friction. So take a, a minute and just think for yourself, how and where might you be misaligning with for every choice as a consequence? Maybe you got a speeding ticket recently and you want to blame the police officer. When in reality, you made a choice to speed and one of the potential consequences is you got a ticket. There's a lot of potential consequences, right? Like if you are late to a meeting and you choose to speed, well, one consequence is you make it to the meeting on time. Another consequence is you speed and you still don't make it to the meeting on time. Another consequence is you speed and you get caught speeding and then you get a ticket and now you really don't make it to the meeting on time and you got a fine, right? You see how there's a lot of potential consequences for a single choice. So taking ownership and taking responsibility, that is the powerful way to go and that's what it looks like to align with this principle. The next principle is everything is energy. And to explain this one, I need you to put on your science hats. <laughs> I guess your science hats. What, what hats did the scientists wear? Maybe your glasses or your goggles. Because for this one, we, we need to uh, expand our minds a little bit um, and connect with what's called quantum physics. Because everything is energy. Everything is energy. Thoughts your body, the seat you're sitting in, the words that you're hearing flow through your 
your ears into your eardrum right now, the signals that your brain is processing, the things that are firing across your synapses, all of that is energy. And quantum physics tells us that everything is made up of energy. And when you break things down to the smallest pieces, you've got atoms, right? And at the core of that atom is energy field. There's energy field in there. And atoms make up all things. Like I said, they make, us, they make up us. They make up our phones, our cars, our food, our ideas, all of those things, light, all of those things. And since atoms are energy, then we're back to the principle. Everything is energy. Now, what's really awesome about that is <clears throat> when you connect with that, in, with, with that principle and you align with it, what it allows you to do is it allows you to simply understand. Like you can see things for what they are rather than see things through a lens of judgment. Let's take food, for example. Let's take a big, fat, greasy hamburger, with bacon, cheese, chili on it, fried onions, more cheese, chocolate sauce. <laughs> I'm just talking about a very like, wow, that burger is going to put me in a food coma. A lot of people will look at that and say, that food is bad. That is that is bad food for you. That, is, that food is not going to be do anything good for you. And we throw those words on it, good and bad, and we judge it. When in reality, if you connect with the principle and look at everything as energy, what you can do is understand that eating that food might simply lower your energy, might lower your vibration, might lower your health. Eating a different food might raise your energy, raise your vibration, raise your health. So that principle allows you to look at something like food or maybe a person or maybe an environment or maybe a conversation. And instead of judging it, right, judgments lead to attachments. So when you judge stuff, you're going to now whoop, form an attachment with it. Instead of doing that, you can simply assess. Look at it for what it is. Understand that it simply is energy, and energy is just going to flow in either direction, right? So is this, is this idea, is this food, is this relationship, is this concept, is this movie, is this whatever going to be raising my overall energy or lowering my overall energy? You have the ability to understand when you align with that principle. And this one is huge because we are surrounded by different types of energy all the time. And we, we, we say things like, oh, that person has toxic energy. Like we say that stuff because when we're around that person's energy, we feel depleted or we, we, feel, we just feel it in our bodies. It doesn't uplift us, doesn't make us feel empowered or loved or safe. And so again, instead of judging that person, we can simply assess now. Everything is energy. You have the power to understand. So this one is a really great one. And sometimes, you know, it might, it might take a minute to kind of wrap your mind around it. But I think if you can just think of like boiling everything down to its just smallest, smallest, you know, piece, then you can remember that everything is fundamentally energy. All right. The next principle is consciousness creates. Consciousness creates. And this is an amazing principle because like the other ones, this one is always at play in your life. However, if you aren't aware of it, it's very easy to misalign with consciousness creates. What this principle really says and means is that the things that are created around you the experiences, the, the, the things you attract into your life, they begin in the subconscious. They begin, begin in the realm of, of conscious thought or subconscious thought. But they begin in there. And what happens is when things are happening in, in, the, in the subconscious realm, it opens up possibility for something to exist. And it's that space that's created, that possibility that allows the thing to come into fruition. So I've heard this a lot with, with students. I remember uh, I used to, to do some lectures 
back at University of Florida when I was in grad school, I would, or excuse me, after grad school, I would go back and I would talk to students and you would hear students saying different things like, I'm just terrible at this. I'm just terrible at, you know, finance or I'm really terrible at statistics or my reading comprehension is just awful. I, I can't remember things when I read them. I'm just not great at that. Now, if we think of that in terms of consciousness creates, when a student says, I'm simply terrible at this, what happens is they are eliminating the space for, for the possibility. They're just killing possibility. If you tell yourself over and over and over, I'm terrible at statistics, and you're in a statistics class, do you think you're going to be able to grasp statistics at a high level if you're constantly telling yourself that you're terrible at it? No. It's not going to happen. You're going to start believing the things that you're saying. You know, and you might have heard the phrase, thoughts become things. Yeah. You might have heard the phrase, what you focus on expands. Yeah. You might have heard people talking about law of attraction. If you listen to this podcast, you heard my, my, my opinions on law of attraction. But it, all of that is sort of under the umbrella of this idea of consciousness creates. So going back to this example of the student who keeps telling themselves they're terrible at the subject, if they wanted to align with the principle of consciousness creates, they might say to themselves, you know what? As long as I hold this story that I'm terrible at statistics, I'm probably not going to be any good at statistics. So why don't I change my internal story to something that opens up possibility? Why don't I tell myself, you know what? I can get this. I can understand this material. I just need to keep at it. I just need to keep working hard and keep applying myself. I can get this. You see how shifting that up and aligning with the principle creates the space for possibility by just simply telling yourself, you know what, I can get this. I just have to work at it. Now the space exists. Now it's possible for you to actually get and create that thing. But misaligning with it is what they were doing in the first place, saying, I'm never going to get this. I'm no good at this. Genetics. My parents were no good at this subject, and I'm not no good at it. My parents were terrible at school. I'm terrible at school. That right there is misaligning with the principle, and it shuts down all possibility. So consciousness creates is a huge one because, again, it's probably happening in your life in ways that you're not aware of. You might be telling yourself that you're just terrible at relationships, that you always get dealt the crappy hand in life, that you just have terrible luck, that no great things ever happen to me, that everybody else always gets the break. As long as you're holding those ideas in your conscious or your subconscious, you are either expanding the space for it to, 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 to manifest or you're reducing that space and you're eliminating possibility. But either way, consciousness creates is at play. And so when you align with it, you can actually use that, again, like the vision board example. That's consciousness creates right there, right? When you put something on your vision board, you are saying, okay, I'm creating the space for this to happen. I'm creating the space for this to manifest. Now, there's things that need to happen in order for it to come to fruition to really, you know, become real, but you are at least creating the space for it when you connect with the principle consciousness creates. Fourth principle, here we go, fourth out of f four out of five. The fourth principle is health supports life. And this one is pretty simple, and it really is just like it sounds. Health supports life. Things that are healthy support life, support life function, support life energy, support life flow. What's really cool about this is when you connect with health supports life, what happens is you start to experience healing. You start to experience healing. That's what it, what this principle, what alignment with this principle really gives you access to. Because to heal means to detoxify your body faster then you are intoxifying your body to get rid of the toxins faster than you're putting them in. Physical toxins, emotional toxins, mental, spiritual, social, all that stuff. Getting rid of those toxins faster than you're bringing them into your body. When you're doing that, you're creating health. You're creating health when you're doing that. 
and things that are healthy ultimately support life. And so this principle, again, this one's at play in your life right now. An example of what it looks like to align with health supports life. Like if you have that in your mind, you're like, all right, I really want to be aware of health supports life. You might look at your work environment differently. You might decide to choose a work environment based on how it impacts your overall health. Yeah. You might say, you know what? Health supports life. I'm playing for life. I'm playing for an abundant, loving life. Therefore, I want to choose a work environment that really aligns with this principle because I'm playing for healing, and that's the experience that I want to have. Misaligning with health supports life is almost equally as simple. It's choosing anything that is clearly unhealthy, anything that is clearly toxic for you, especially if you're wondering why your health is going downhill. If you're wondering why your health is going downhill, whether it's physical or emotional, maybe you're just, you know, you're going to the doctor and they're just giving you, you know, rough reports each time you go, or maybe you're watching your, your, your physical body change and do things you don't enjoy, or maybe you're seeing your emotions go down, maybe you know, anxiety is going up, maybe all sorts of different things that are happening. You might want to look at whether or not you are misaligning with health supports life. Are you placing yourselves in environments or around people or are you constantly putting yourself in conversations where healing is not happening? One of the places that you might be misaligning and you may not even know it is social media. There's not a lot of healing happening on social media. There just isn't, you know? And if you're constantly involved in social media and you aren't aware of, of some of the bombardment of, of energy and judgments and comparisons and all those things that are, that are overt and very subtle, if you're not aware of that, it's very easy to misalign with health supports life. And so like for me personally, I have to check myself on social media, you know, I have to catch myself to see if I'm going on there, how am I feeling? Am I feeling that I'm just taking in like toxins? And in this case, the toxins are toxic judgments, comparisons, saying to myself, why doesn't my account look like theirs? Why am I not making posts like those people? Why are, am I not experiencing engagement like them? All that type of stuff. If that's the case, then I'm clearly misaligning with health supports life. But having that awareness is key because with all these principles, if you aren't aware of them, it's very easy to misalign and wonder why things aren't feeling great in your life, wonder why things aren't working, wonder why things are hard. So think about health supports life for yourself. Where do you have the opportunity to align and experience healing? The final principle, is it's actually a nice segue from the fourth one. The fifth and final principle is the PPC balance is the precursor to longevity. I'll say it again. The PPC balance is the precursor to longevity. So you might be thinking, what is PPC balance? Well, I've done a bunch of episodes on the balance between production and production capacity. That's PPC, production P, production capacity PC. I've talked a lot about this, and that concept comes from Stephen Covey, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. That's really the essence of, of the book is the PPC balance. And there's a fable that he tells. And, uh, boy, I f Aesop's fable? I believe that's what it is. And it's the fable of the golden goose who lays the golden eggs. And basically, a farmer has a goose and he discovers that his goose lays golden eggs. And this farmer has been poor his whole life, and now he has this amazing goose that lays these solid gold eggs. And so the farmer can take the eggs into the market and sell them, and he starts to become rich, and he loves all the wealth that he's gaining. And every day, the goose gives him a new egg. But the farmer gets greedy, and he's like, you know what? If I cut this goose open, I can get all the eggs at once and get super rich. So he cuts the goose open, and... What do you know? There are no eggs inside. And now he's killed his means to getting those eggs. So the, the, the moral of the story is you got to take care of the golden goose. If you want the eggs, you got to take care of the goose. 
And so this principle says that balance between the eggs and the goose is the precursor to longevity. Before you can go long in life, like live a long time, go long and far, before that can happen, you have to have balance between your P and your PC. You have to have balance between the golden eggs you're producing and the thing that is producing the eggs, the goose. What a lot of people do, a lot of folks are out of balance here, super out of balance, because we are a society and a culture that really prizes ourselves on our P, on our production, on our money, on our stuff, on our golden eggs, on our accumulated degrees, on our accomplishments, on our you know kids and raising families. We, we pride ourselves on those things way more than we, we pay attention to our own selves, taking care of ourselves. That's why I talk about this so much on the show because I am so for maintaining a balance. And what's really beautiful and what people just don't like it's it don't connect with is that as you maintain your balance, what you can start to do is increase your capacity. So I always use the um, the example of a cup and being able to pour from a cup, right? You're familiar with that. You can't pour from an empty cup. So what a lot of people are doing is they're pouring all over the world. That's their pee. The water in their cup is their pee. Having water in the cup in the first place is the PC. So a lot of people are walking around with these empty cups, but they keep trying to pour. They keep trying to pour. At, at some point, that's not sustainable, and it's going to break down. Now, when you have balance between P and PC, over time, as you really rep that balance and you maintain that balance, that, what happens is the size of that cup can actually grow. And now you can have more capacity. Now you can create more P because your production capacity has gone up. Now you can make more golden eggs because the health of the goose has gone up. That's what you're ultimately playing for in life. That's part of having it all. Having that abundance of health so that you can show up the way you want with your family, at work, with your friends, in your community, with your hobbies. So that you can create all the P that you want, the money, and do all the different things and support all the different people while at the same time thrive in your health. Whatever that looks like for you. Everybody's thriving at a different level, but to feel like you're actually thriving in your health. So this principle, remember, it says that the balance between your P and PC is the precursor to longevity. And when you align with this principle, what it allows you to do is it allows you to live sustainably. Sustainably. Because you cannot sustain having a massive imbalance in your P and your PC. You cannot. When there is a gap, and that gap persists for a long time, something is going to fill that gap. If you are just cranking it, working overtime like crazy, you know, 80, 100, 120 hour weeks, going, 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 redlining, pushing yourself, well, something's going to happen. You're either going to break down, you know, some sort of massive collapse, could happen with your health, maybe something else breaks down, or you start to, Add some things in to help you push, push, push. Add some artificial substances. That's what people do. We start taking drugs. We start really loading up on the caffeine. We start using all these different things to keep our push, push, push. That is not sustainable. That's operating out of force. And the, at, at some point, the resistance is going to become overwhelming. And it's going to flip. And there's going to be some sort of breakdown. So this principle is so important because... For if you want to be able to go along in life and have a grand experience of your life, you have to establish and maintain a balance between your production and your production capacity. You have to have balance between your golden eggs and the golden goose that creates those eggs. So aligning with this principle is simple. It's really simple. An example of aligning would be taking small breaks out of your day to make some deposits into yourself, to fill up your cup, to get some points in your balance chart. It's that simple. So if you're working eight hours a day, maybe every 45 minutes, stop and drink some water. Take a five-minute break. Take some deep breaths. Go for a walk around the office. Do some push-ups. Do a squat hold. Meditate for a few minutes. 
and do that every couple of hours all throughout your day. Insert those things so that as you are pushing on the P side, you're also refilling on the PC side. That's what alignment looks like. Misalignment, well, we already discussed it. Misalignment is pushing your body to the breaking point. Misalignment is putting in eight hours straight, 10 hours straight, 12 hours straight, 14 hours straight, no breaks, not putting anything back in your body, not refilling your cup at all, and then just saying, I'm just going to refill it at the end of the day. I'm going to refill it at the end of the week. I'm going to refill it during the next holiday. I'm going to refill it at the end of the year during my vacation, if you even take your vacation. A lot of people don't. They just cash in those hours, and they keep on going. That will lead to some sort of breakdown. These principles are always, always going on, always doing their thing. So think right now, like, how are you aligning or misaligning to PPC balance as a precursor to longevity? You'll feel it in your body if you're misaligning. I guarantee it. And listen, let's not judge ourselves, by the way, when we do misalign, because you will misalign with principle. You're not going to be aligned all the time. I've been studying this myself for seven years. I've been very, very intentional about incorporating these in my life for seven years. I've been teaching it for a while as well, teaching it to others. And I misalign all the time, <laughs> right? The point is to not ever misalign. The point is to recognize when you've misaligned, when you are in misalignment, and to correct and to get back on course and to get back into alignment. That's the point. And so the reason why I wanted, again, to share with you these five key principles that I live by is because if you're misaligning with these principles, which again are universal truths, they're true for every single person. If you're misaligning with it, I want you to be able to, to see that. I want you to be able to, to know that you're misaligning and to understand that maybe the friction you're experiencing in your relationship is a result of a principle misalignment. Maybe the feelings that you're having of helplessness that you have no options, are the result of a principle misalignment. Or maybe the, the judgments that you carry or the jealousy that you have or the anger that you have towards other people are misalignments and with principles. So that when you recognize those things, you can say, oh, wow, Matthew said that, those, that when I feel this way, there might be some misalignment going on. So let me examine which principles I'm maybe not aligning with. And then you might spot, oh, dang, you know what? I really am not aligning with for every choice is a consequence here. I'm not taking responsibility. Okay, well, if I want to create a different experience in this circumstance right now, why don't I align? Why don't I just take full responsibility and see what happens? Like that's how we use these in our lives. That is exactly how I use these principles in my life. Because again, go back to what I said at the top. Part of having it all is having these strong core principles at the center of your life so that you can anchor your life on these principles. That's part of what having it all is all about. So it's important that we understand what principles are first and foremost, that we have some very clear examples of principles that we can use in our lives, and that we know how to actually use them. And so that has been my goal today. And as you could probably tell, I could just go in on this stuff so, so deep and for so long because there's a lot to unpack. And we only talked about five principles, and that's fine. You know, we don't need to get into dozens and dozens and dozens. You probably just need to pick one for now. Just pick one principle and work on that. Work on understanding one of the five that I shared today. Pick one of them. Go back and re-listen to the one that maybe resonated with you the most. Listen to what the principle is. Understand what examples of alignment and misalignment are. And start thinking through your life as to where you are aligning and misaligning. Start gaining a little bit of experience and ultimate mastery over one principle, then expand to two, then expand to three. I have five, and it's taken me many years to really you know, embody these principles and, and really understand them to the point that like, I can feel a misalignment in my body real quick. And I'm not going to go past five right now. I'm, I'm cool where I'm at right now because there's so much to learn and there's so much opportunity with just these five. So I'm really excited for you now, especially if this is the first time that you have gone deep on this idea of principles. 
Um, I'm excited about what this is going to unlock. Just this simple new level of awareness around what principles are and having five that you now know is going to change things. It's going to absolutely change things um, in your life. And I'm excited to hear about it. I would love for you to share with me what understandings that you are having after you listen to this episode, what maybe aha moments you're having about things in your life that have either been working or not been working as a result of aligning or misaligning. And maybe share with me what other questions you have about principles. I'm happy to answer those questions and uh, possibly do more episodes where I just talk about the questions. So hit me up. Once again, you can DM me on Instagram at Matthew underscore Bivens, or you can email me at mattcbivens at gmail.com. You can always go to my website, which is matthewbivens.com, and hit the contact form. Um, and you know, keep checking out what's on the site. Like I said, I've got some cool stuff on there right now. Uh, blog feature is going to be coming soon. Videos are going to be coming soon. So I'm really creating this hub for you to understand principles <laughs> and for you to to truly live an abundant, loving life. That's what the goal of this podcast is. That's part of what my mission is in life. It's part of what I'm playing for, um, and it's part of what I'm creating here. And uh, I'm. Grateful you're here with me along the ride. I'm grateful that you know you are are absorbing this, these these ideas um, and putting them into practice in your life. That's magic for me. So thank you so much for joining me on today's episode. My name is Matthew Bivens, and here is to you having it all. Quick note about the Having It All podcast. I am not a doctor nor a licensed therapist. I'm a guy with a story and a passion for conscious conversation. My thoughts, opinions, and beliefs are my own. So please consult with your doctor or healthcare provider regarding any questions or issues you have related to your personal, physical, or mental health.